Hello everyone, thank you for joining me for another episode of Diecast Emporium. In today's video, we're going to take a look at a pretty unusual piece of heavy equipment, and that is the Wheels of Time 187 or HO scale PC90 Piggy Packer. This type of machine has been in service since the late 1960s, and as you can tell from the various photos on the packaging, basically it's used to move trailers off of trains and then hook them up to semi-trucks so that they can be taken away from the sort yard and... Uh, also move some containers around depending on what configuration you have the machine set up as. Taking a look at the packaging further, you can see that Wheels of Time has actually done a pretty good job here for as small of a company as they are. You have several uh, photos. There's, there's the Wheels of Time logo, their Facebook page. There's a color photo of the machine at work. And on the back, I like this a lot. Here's a replica um, registration placard, which looks pretty good. Again, here's some more outline drawings of the machine. Wheels of Time did several different versions of this. I'm aware of at least a dozen that are out there. The one that I have is the Conrail version with um, no catwalk over the right front wheel. Again, several different variations that are out there. I already have the model unboxed, but just to show you real quick, it is basically one piece, which I can appreciate a lot. Um, in other words, you don't have to assemble the model. Just take it out of the two-piece plastic former seen here. Also, no twisty ties. Good on you. Wheels of Time, thank you. Basically, once you take it out of the box, you are ready to display it, and it should look a whole lot like this. All right, let's cover some of the details and decals now. This is a sharp-looking model. Again, it is 187 scale, so it's not very big end-to-end. -end. There's a pen for reference uh, and for height reference. There you go. So it's not a very large machine in 187 scale, but it is very intricately detailed. First, we can see 55-1040. Presumably, that is a, uh, a fleet identification number, but that's just a guess at this point. I don't know enough about these machines to be able to tell you definitively, but that's my educated guess. You have the Conrail graphic here, along with Piggy Packer with a semi-truck logo. Again, looks quite good. All of the hand railings and the access stairs, all of those are to scale and look quite good. It may be hard to see on camera, but both the steps and the catwalk outside of the cab have holes on them, so hopefully you can see that. Uh, hopefully that's coming across on camera without my arm in the way. It's necessary for me to hold the spreader bars, otherwise they will slide off if I'm holding it at an obvious acute angle like that. Okay, um, also lights, exhaust, working lights, uh, the orange be uh, beacon light, clear beacon light, that looks quite good. Uh, only thing I could have asked for that to be even better, and I'm sure many skilled modelers have already done this, and that is to make the light actually function and flash on and off. That would be super cool. At the back, right above the, the handrails here and above the rear axle assembly, you can see what looks like a weather vane. And if we, <clears throat> excuse me, if I move this close to you, hopefully uh, you can see that part a little bit better. Let's zoom in a little bit. And it looks like a, a weather vane. Here you can see it here. And if you look closely, it actually moves at the angle that the rear axles and tires are spinning. So presumably, again, my, my guess would be that is to show the operator at a quick glance what angle the machine is facing when it's trying to maneuver around in the yard. Uh, but again, just a guess. I don't know if that is accurate or not. We will zoom back out now to finish up some of the details. The tires are rubber and they look quite good. The hubs are detailed as well. Again, this small scale, sometimes it's kind of hard to see that. Looking at the business end of the machine, again, we have that same... Number sequence 551040 up on top of the spreader bar. And this whole assembly, uh, again, is very, very detailed. And it's hard to see because, obviously, if I flip it upside down, this might come apart. But if you look, there are some magnets on each side of the spreader bars. Um, and, again, if I had a HO metal trailer, I would really like to test this out and see if it will actually lock onto it. But it's nice to see that they have included just a couple little magnets and uh, it'd be really cool to actually test those out and see if they work. That said, that'll wrap up the details and decals. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll go through some of the functionality, and then we'll wrap up the video. All right, let's cover some of the functionality now. Obviously, the first thing we need to know is if the wheels will roll. Mine, especially on the large front tires, are a little bit stiff, and I don't really want to um, force them to work, but they seem like they will roll a little bit. Uh, the rear tire and rear axle assembly, the one that steers. Not only does it steer, but it seems to roll quite better than the ones at the front. Again, this is really intended to be a high-quality showpiece, not really meant to be that functional. So I can uh, I can let that pass, if you will, and that doesn't bother me. 
All right, the main lift boom. Disclaimer, be very careful when you are doing this. Mine is very, very fragile. Hopefully I won't shatter this on camera. It'll make for a great blooper if I do. Um, but very, very carefully, you can control the height. And again, it just kind of clicks into various predetermined sections. Um, but it is strong enough that it will hold it up, which is good to see. Again, just be very, very, very careful, very careful when you are messing with that and posing it. I would suggest putting it to whatever angle you want to leave it, or put it at whatever angle you want to display it at and leave it. Don't mess with it at all. Now, on to the spreader bar. You can close in and close out. So depending on the size of trailer that you are picking up, it will accommodate smaller trailers versus longer trailers. And again, I touched on this a little bit earlier, but these do fold in and fold out. The rear ones, the ones that are colored black here, you can see with my finger, uh, they also will fold in and out. They are not as long as the front ones. And again, doing a bit of research before I did this video, so I actually sounded like I sort of knew what I was talking about when it comes to this type of machine. But that's accurate. These are supposed to not be the same height. Uh, I don't know on the model if you can take these out of the yellow bracket and adjust them for height. Again, I paid $100 for my model. I'm not going to screw with it too much. But that is really nice to see that it is accurate. Again, the other bit of functionality, and I'm sorry I don't have a metal container or trailer to show you, but there are two magnets, one here and one here under the spreader bar, that seems like it would lock on to a metal trailer. All right, let's go over a couple different display possibilities, and then we'll end the video. We're already at six and a half minutes. I appreciate your patience, and thank you all so much for watching my... Uh, videos. Try and be as thorough as I possibly can. So here's a 187 scale trailer. Now when I was doing this earlier, I'll admit I spent about a half hour and that's it trying to get this to lock on uh, and it didn't. It would not hold this up and this is a plastic trailer, it bears repeating, not a metal trailer, but it wouldn't lock on and it wouldn't hold it. However, as you can see here, lower it a little bit carefully. I'm taking my life into my hands. So if you want it lowered, you can at least show that you are uh, picking up the trailer, which is kind of the, the display that I like. This way, you can show it removing a semi-trailer from a flat car or switching it around in a yard. Or again, if you had a metal trailer, maybe you could get it to lock on and stay in the up position, although you probably would have to add some magnets and some ballast weight at the rear to prevent the whole thing from shifting forward, uh, especially if you have a metal trailer. So, that's the functionality. That is the review. Overall, I gotta tell you guys, the Wheels of Time PC90, they did a really good job on this machine. Um, the details are really good. Uh, the functionality could always be improved. I have yet to see a model in any scale that has perfect functionality and I'm completely happy with. That said, if you are a 187 or HO scale model railroader and you want to put this on your sorter yard, your intermodal yard, your switcher yard, whatever, this is an excellent model to display and to use those purposes for. It is not a model to be played with, so be very careful when you are setting the pose that you want your model to be. All right. Now, before we close the video out, let me show you a couple other quick models you can get that are similar to this. And these are the, the two that I'm going to show you. Uh, this has been reviewed before, so click on the one at your screen if you want to see it. Uh, but this is a Kalmar container crane. And then this one is also a container crane. So there you go. You can have three different types of the same machinery. I'm going to move this over here so you can see it a little bit better. But basically, there are three different types of machines that do the same job. All right. Now we bring our video to a close. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. Until next time, take care, be well. I'll see you in the next video.